on World News Tonight. War path. China prepares for Taiwan-aimed armed conflict as the latter tightened ties with the West. Covid on the rise. Soon to be the world's most populous nation, India is faced with an old threat. How severe will this be? Find out tonight. Strong in solitude. Israel bombards Syria with missiles as Jewish state gets attacked from all directions by pro-Palestine nations. Underwater egg hunt. Scuba divers dive to the seabeds in search of Easter eggs hidden by the Easter Bunny. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and we wish you a very happy Easter from all of us here at World News Tonight. Millions of Christians around the world celebrated Easter Sunday, the most holy day on the Christian calendar, commemorating the passion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, with Pope Francis himself calling for world peace and unity in preparation for the second coming of Christ. From this balcony in the sunshine of the Vatican, Pope Francis used his Easter message to warn about darkness. He called for an end to the gloom and conflicts that envelope the world. Help for the Ukrainians, more help for Turkey's earthquake victims, and that all too familiar prayer for peace in the Middle East. I express deep concern about the recent attacks which threaten the desired climate of trust and reciprocal respect necessary to resume dialogue between Israelis and Palestinians so that peace may reign in the holy city and the entire region. More than 45,000 followers gathered in St. Peter's Square to take it all in, content perhaps at seeing him in person after poor health had threatened the Pope's Easter engagements. A thousand miles away in Canterbury, the same message. Light over darkness, life over death, and a warning that there will be divine justice. We do not lose heart, but we pray and we work for Ukraine and Russia, for Israel and Palestine with the recent tragedies especially and for the other so often forgotten struggles of our world, as we are surrounded by fears, even by evil, we know that those who oppress and subjugate others will face divine justice. On a day that marks new beginnings, a new king led his family to Easter Mass, his first since his mother's death, and on the second anniversary of his father's. A once outspoken prince stuck to royal tradition for a quiet and private Easter on the Windsor estate. China ramps up its three-day military drills across the Straits by simulating precision strikes on Taiwan. Taiwan states that dozens of military aircrafts and ships were spotted and were being closely observed. China's military simulated precision strikes against Taiwan on Sunday in a second day of drills around the island nation. That's according to its state broadcaster CCTV, which said the military was maintaining, quote, an offensive posture around the island. Taiwan's defense ministry said its military had spotted dozens of Chinese aircraft and several ships near its territory by midday and was especially monitoring the movement of Chinese missile forces. Tensions across the Taiwan Strait kicked up a notch on Saturday as China began three days of military exercises around the island. One fraught exchange appeared to be captured in a video released by Taiwan's Coast Guard late in the day, showing an officer warning a Chinese warship to leave or face eviction measures. Taiwan's defense forces also reported spotting dozens of Chinese aircraft crossing the sensitive median line of the Taiwan Strait. The drill started a day after Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen returned from a brief visit to the United States, where she met U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, despite Beijing's warnings against it. China claims democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory and says it is the most important and sensitive issue in its relations with the U.S. It has also refused to renounce the use of force to bring the island under its control. Last August, after then-U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, China staged war games around Taiwan, including firing missiles into waters close by, though it has not announced similar exercises this time. 
and life in Taiwan has continued as normal, with no sign of panic or disruption from the Chinese drills, which had been widely expected following Tsai's U.S. visit. The de facto U.S. embassy in Taiwan said on Sunday Washington was monitoring China's moves around Taiwan closely and was, quote, comfortable and confident it has sufficient resources and capabilities regionally to ensure peace and stability. India's health ministry is conducting mock drills to check preparedness of hospitals to deal with the rising COVID-19 cases. The drills are being held on Monday and Tuesday across the country. India's active case count of COVID is relatively low, but experts are urging caution to stop further spread of the disease. The country saw a deadly second wave in 2021 and the government came up under criticism as many hospitals ran out of oxygen and critical care beds. India recorded close to 6,000 new cases on Sunday, government data showed, and the active case count was 35,000. The surge is largely driven by the XBB 1.16, which is an Omicron subvariant. The WHO has said it was watching the subvariant and the spread in India. This comes as India is projected to become the world's most populous country with over 1.4 billion people sometime in the second half of April, according to the United Nations projections overtaking China in the process. India's 2011 census had put the country's population at 1.21 billion, meaning the country has added 210 million million, or almost the number of people in Brazil, to its population in 12 years. The population explosion is exposing to its own challenges with a massive and young workforce in the years to come expected to migrate to urban areas within their own and other states, leading to rapid and large-scale increases in urban population. Providing these migrants access to basis amenities, health and social services in urban areas could also prove to be a challenge for policy planners. Israel struck Syria in a retaliatory move after many attacks came from both Lebanon and Syria over the Easter weekend that threatened the livelihood of Israelis living in the region. Israeli jets hit Syrian military targets on Sunday in response to rockets launched towards Israeli-controlled territory overnight. That's according to Israel's military, as violence flared again following cross-border exchanges of fire during the week. State media in Syria reported explosions in the vicinity of the capital, Damascus. Israel said its forces had continued to hit Syrian territory after six rockets were fired overnight towards the Golan Heights. Israel said artillery and drone strikes hit the rocket launchers and were followed by airstrikes against a Syrian army compound, military radar systems and artillery posts. The Syrian Defense Ministry said its air defenses had responded to the Israeli attacks and intercepted some Israeli missiles. It said no casualties had been reported, with only material damage caused by the strikes. Lebanon-based al Mayadeen TV said the rocket salvos that entered Israeli-controlled territory were claimed by Al-Quds Brigades, the armed wing of the Iranian-backed Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement. Israel seized the Golan Heights in the 1967 Middle East War and annexed the 460-square-mile territory in 1981, a move not recognized by most of the international community. Earlier this week, over 30 rockets were fired towards Israel from southern Lebanon, drawing cross-border counter-strikes from Israel on sites linked to the Islamist movement Hamas in Lebanon and Gaza. The cross-border exchanges came amid sharply increased tensions between Israel and Palestinian groups following Israeli police raids in recent days on Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Despite fears of further violence around the mosque on Saturday, there were no reports of serious disturbances overnight. A four-storey building in the French city of Marseille collapsed overnight. While the cause of the explosion is yet unclear, authorities state eight individuals are still to be accounted for. This pile of rubble is what remains of a four-storey building. It collapsed just after midnight on Saturday in Marseille, leaving residents shaken. My bedroom is in the middle of my apartment, and when the explosion went off, I really felt it. The mayor of Marseille stated that the exact cause of the collapse, which also partially destroyed two neighbouring buildings, hasn't yet been confirmed. Gas has been highlighted as a possible reason. He did, however, confirm that several people have been injured. At the moment, there are 33 people who have been affected. 
six who have been transported to hospital, five as a matter of urgency, and one person in a state of extreme shock. Dozens of firefighters arrived at the scene, but the rubble made their work difficult, and a fire which broke out among the debris prevented rescue operations from being carried out. We're trying to put out the fire while saving the lives of victims who may be trapped in the rubble. So it's an extremely delicate operation trying to evacuate people and fighting the fire. We're trying to pick up the pace because time counts in this operation. Several other buildings on the street were evacuated to a local school as a matter of precaution. We'll be back with more world news after a short commercial break. Welcome back. Highly classified Pentagon documents leaked online in recent weeks have provided a rare window into how the U.S. spies on allies and foes alike, deeply rattling U.S. officials who fear the relevations could jeopardize sensitive sources and compromise important foreign relationships. Regarding the dozens of highly classified recently leaked military documents, the U.S. says it's reviewing the matter. That's according to the Pentagon on Sunday in a written interview with South Korea's Yonhap News Agency. The department said it was looking into the leak and that it has asked the Justice Department to launch an investigation. Last Friday, a new batch of photos of wrinkled documents apparently originating from the Pentagon was shared online. They revealed information seemingly obtained by U.S. spy agencies on a wide range of matters, including Russia's invasion of Ukraine and also info on key allies like South Korea and Israel, which could hurt diplomatic ties. Citing the leaked documents, the New York Times detailed a conversation between then-President Yoon suk yeols secretary for foreign affairs and his national security advisor that the government was, quote, murdered in concerns that the U.S. would not be the end user if South Korea were to comply with a U.S. request for ammunition. In February, the U.S. had reportedly inquired about purchasing ammunition from South Korea, but the administration was worried about supplies reaching Ukraine and going against its long-standing policy of not supplying weapons to countries at war. The Times noted that details of the discussion between top advisors of South Korea's president were based on signals intelligence, a term used by spy agencies to describe intercepted communications from phone calls to electronic messages. The papers also contain plans by Russian mercenaries, the Wagner Group, to operate in Africa and how the Israeli foreign intelligence agency Mossad had encouraged its staff and members of the public to participate in the anti-government protests that took place across the country in March. According to CNN, U.S. officials say the documents are real. As Russia ramps up attacks on Bakhmut, the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky slammed Russia over concentrated attacks during Palm Sunday that killed multiple civilians in the Donsk region, despite Bakhmut already being in Russian hands. Russian forces are focusing a barrage of attacks along the front in two Ukrainian cities in the eastern Donetsk region. That's according to Ukraine's military, as Kyiv said on Sunday it repelled more than 40 enemy strikes over 24 hours. According to the general staff of Ukrainian armed forces, fighting has been heaviest along the western approaches to Bakhmut, which, along with Avdivka, have been targeted by Russia's military. Russian forces have been besieging Bakhmut for months in the longest battle in more than a year of war. In his nightly video address, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky denounced Russian airstrikes, coinciding with the observance of Orthodox Palm Sunday. Every bright Christian holiday teaches us that we may not know how, but we must be sure that evil will lose. We have to bring the defeat of evil closer, and we are bringing it closer. Zelensky also lashed out at Moscow over the deaths of a 50-year-old man and his 11-year-old daughter, who were killed as Russian forces struck their home in the southeastern city of Zaporizhia. Ukraine's state emergency service said a woman identified as the wife and mother of the victims was pulled alive from under the rubble. This is how the terrorist state spends Palm Sunday. This is how Russia puts itself in even greater isolation from the world and from humanity. The majority of Ukraine's 41 million people are Orthodox Christians who celebrate Easter a week from now. Russia's defense ministry said on Sunday its forces had destroyed a depot with 70,000 tons of fuel near Zaporizhia. 
It added that Russian troops had destroyed Ukrainian army warehouses storing missiles, ammunition and artillery in the regions of Zaporizhia and Donetsk. It could not verify the battlefield reports. As Texas doubles down on its anti-abortion stance, the Biden administration plans to appeal a ruling by a Texas federal judge that restricts local access to the abortion pill known as Mifepristone. The Biden administration says it will appeal a Texas-based federal judge's ruling, halting access to an abortion pill while legal challenges proceed, and will press for continued access to the drug. It's called Mifepristone, and it had been given the green light for more than two decades. But Judge Matthew Kaczmarek's Friday ruling would make sales of it illegal, while a challenge against it plays out in the courts. The judge left a week-long window for his ruling to take effect. Vice President Kamala Harris said the pill's suspension goes against women's rights. There is no question that the president and I are going to stand with the women of America and do everything we can to ensure that women have the ability to make decisions about their health care, their reproductive health care. Mifepristone is part of a two-drug regimen used for medication abortions in the first 10 weeks of pregnancy. The drugs account for more than half of all abortions in the country. Anti-abortion groups sued the FDA last year, arguing the agency used an improper process two decades ago to approve the drug. I would like to thank the people who got me to this point. First and foremost, President Trump. Kazmarek, a conservative former Christian activist, hasn't ruled on the challenge itself, but has already found the lawsuit is likely to succeed. Adding to the volatile legal landscape around abortion, a federal judge in Washington state on Friday issued a seemingly conflicting injunction that prevented federal regulators from altering access to the same abortion drug. Legal experts say a conflict between the two rulings will have to be hashed out by higher courts. As artificial intelligence develops and robots become smarter, South Korea is looking to create smart buildings where robots perform tasks like delivering packages and supporting the elderly. While robots are already being used in many parts of the country to make life easier, many limitations still restrict their use. Most are either cleaning, carrying food to customers, or disinfecting as it wanders around. While these are all helpful features, Experts in Korea believe they can do more. That's why the nation's land ministry has come up with the idea of smart buildings that are designed so that robots can be used to their fullest. When a building becomes smart, the robots will bring a package from outside to right in front of the office or even into the room. It's an idea that makes things a lot more convenient. The ministry also predicted that the technology would provide a setting where robots can disinfect areas and take care of elders. When seniors need a wheelchair or rescue robots with handles and wheels, they aren't just for use at home. They need to use them outdoors too and even in different buildings. They also suggested how urban air mobility will be applied to the smart building project. Urban air mobility, also known as UAM, is a next generation traffic system either for traveling or transporting freight. The ministry said once the smart buildings are complete, they will set up UAM stations for easier transfers and a faster response system against any potential accidents. Experts from some 50 public and private organizations have taken part in launching the committee and said they are still working on the exact outline to put the project in place, as autonomous driving and UAM are some of the technologies that still require time to be fully commercialized. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Residents in the northern Thai city of Chiang Mai wore face masks as air quality climbed beyond the safe threshold to unhealthy levels as a result of seasonal agricultural burning across and in the region. Thailand's medical department recommended that people should avoid outdoor activity and wear a mask that can filter airborne particles. Saudi Arabia and Yemen's Houthi militia held direct talks in the Yemeni capital Sana'a to revive a ceasefire in the war-torn country following more than eight years of deadly conflict. The Saudi delegation arrived at the Sana'a International Airport after the arrival of Omani delegation on the same day. 
A vessel with around 400 people on board is adrift between Greece and Malta and is taking on water. Support services alarmed phone said after a sharp rise of migrant boats crossing the Mediterranean from North Africa. Hundreds of people marched in the centre of Georgian capital Tbilisi in support of ex-president Mikhail Saakashvili and the country's pro-European cause. Four people were killed and nine injured in Avalanche south of Mont Blanc in the French Alps. The avalanche happened in the middle of the day on the Armorset Glacier. That is all from us here tonight at World News. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we end things off tonight in the seas of Florida, where the Easter Bunny has chosen a rather peculiar place to hide Easter eggs for amateur scuba divers. Thank you and have a good night.